Good morning and welcome everyone to today's MOOC, Introduction to Exploratory Testing. I'm one of your hosts, Melissa Collins. I'm happy to welcome everyone here from around the world. Whether you are joining us live or checking out the recording online, we're happy to have you. Um, this is our first MOOC of 2017 and you can expect to see these sessions offered every couple weeks from now on. For anyone who is joining us for the first time, I'll give a brief introduction of what to expect here with us. Um, if you haven't heard of a MOOC, the term actually refers to Massive Open Online Course. So that means these sessions are available to everyone. And these MOOCs are delivered by trainers here from the Academy at Tricentis. And occasionally they'll be delivered by another subject matter expert so that you get all the information you need from the experts. Um, our intention with offering these topical courses is to focus on teaching actual hands-on skills in Tricentis Tosca. It's a little bit different than the webinar series that we have here at Tricentis, but you should be able to apply everything you've learned from these MOOCs right directly into your everyday work in Tricentis Tosca. So another important point is that MOOCs aren't meant to be a substitute for training. Um, we do have academy courses here. Um, but the MOOCs are a great source of knowledge that can be used for additional training to do in addition to um, your training courses. And the courses are still where you'll see um, your, your hands-on exercises and, and get the full picture of Tosca and that's where you can earn your certificates. Okay. So now that you understand what a MOOC is, I'll just go over some organizational elements before we begin. Again, my name is Melissa Collins. I'm happy to be here. I am a training consultant at the Academy. And together with me today is Tony Leeming, also a training consultant. Hello. And Ingo Phillip. Ingo is a product manager here at Tricentis, and he is our expert on exploratory testing. So he'll be getting into um, the Q&A at the end with us. Um, I'm going to begin today going into the theory and the purpose of exploratory testing. After that, Tony will do the hands-on demonstration in Tricentis Tosca, showing how the complete process works. And finally, Ingo will be able to um, answer questions at the end of the session. The best way to reach us um, now during the MOOC is to use the question box on your GoToWebinar interface. Um, you all, as participants, have been muted, and that's just to make sure you can hear us perfectly. But please feel free to interact with us, ask us questions, add your comments into the question box as we go along. We love to hear from you. And we'll either be able to answer them in the chat box, or we'll be saving your questions for the Q&A session at the end. That way, everyone can benefit from learning the answer to your question. So just hold back, sit tight if we don't get to your question immediately. And final note, this session will be recorded and it will be made available very soon in the next couple of days on our Academy webpage. So look out for that. Now, today's topics are what is exploratory testing, creating exploratory testing sessions, capturing interactions of exploratory scenarios, and finally, the exploratory testing agent. Our first question of the day, just what is exploratory testing? Let's get that out of the way first so everyone has a clear understanding of the basic theory and purpose of it. So in simple terms, just like manual or automated testing, exploratory testing is just another method of testing a product. We know that testing is done to find potential risks, which can then be evaluated and reduced before the product is delivered. And exploratory testing can be done in a number of ways. It can range from being very structured to completely free-formed. So it's not within a box. It doesn't have standards. It has to reach a certain structure. What's very important with exploratory testing is not the structure, though. It doesn't come down to that. What's important is, that, is the tester's perspective and how they actually think while they're testing. So let's look at a couple testing methods. Imagine this here represents a product and all of the red areas are your areas of potential risk. The risks may vary from being 
um, convenience issues, security issues, reliability issues, and so on. You can see that here on the screen. And this is where your testing methods come into play. What strategies are you going to use to find your risks? So let's picture the path an automated test case would take through a system. The path will be predetermined, pre-designed. Its purpose could be to verify one thing, and along its journey, it may encounter some of your risks, and it would bring them to your attention. In order to test every path within, with automation and find every risk using only automation, you're really going to need a lot of test cases. I think we all know that. Um, but we also know that time and resources might not allow for it to automate everything. So let's picture the same path but executed manually. This test coverage of the system would actually be wider. You can see here that the manual tester would also notice risks along the way just by the simple fact they're viewing the system while they're testing it. They're going to notice more than just the mechanical automated test case would notice. Again, although this method increases your coverage per test case, we need to consider the time we have available. So how can we have wide test coverage but still use our time and resources wisely? Well, that's the beauty of exploratory testing. So in a scenario, the tester would start off with a testing idea, possibly inspired by a requirement, and then they would go from there. They make decisions along the way, just as a user would, of where to go next. And as they explore the system, they would naturally identify the risks and they would document them. And this is a scenario. This is not a test case. You can see it looks very different. And then they could start over with the second scenario and go through the system with a different focus in mind. And these scenarios aren't just randomly clicking through an application, though. Decisions need to be story-based, motivated, and credible. So that means what is likely to happen in a real-life situation. So exploratory testing is perfect when you need to analyze potential risks and determine if they are even problems. And once you have your known risks that need to be monitored, specification-based testing is better suited. You can see that in the middle of the slide here. Specification-based is only focusing one specific area that you're already aware there's a risk. Exploratory testing goes beyond the boundaries. It goes around into the unknown a little bit. And you need both types of testing. You can't just have one and not the other. So one main difference between specification-based testing and exploratory testing is that the first is done mechanically. We saw that with automated test cases, manual test cases. Um, it's very mechanical. It's predetermined, pre-designed. And then the second one here, the green, exploratory testing, exploratory testing, is done intelligently. And for example, I mean during exploratory testing, we intelligently determine which problems actually do matter. We have our thinking involved as we're doing it. So in mechanical testing, the results are in terms of pass versus fail, and the focus is whether the product satisfies the actual relevant standards. Specification-based testing focuses on one specific area of interest, and it does not branch out past the set boundaries of that known risk. Okay, so how would we handle this automated testing um, with all the green circles here? Hmm, how are we going to do that? I mean exploratory testing. Um, well, let's just imagine um, something right now. Let's say that we're set on a mission to explore one certain area, and that's beyond the set boundaries. That is represented here in yellow. It's highlighted. And it could be explored within a session. So we would hold a session to explore this one area of our system. So let's picture a group of testers. You can see them in black, um, focusing on this one area of the system. And the person represented in blue would be the session owner, the person kind of organizing, facilitating, and checking out the results from everyone. And if this is a real session, all of these people would come together for about two hours, and they would test that one area, and then they would review all of their results when they're finished. That's basically what a session is. So let me go a little bit more into that, because we will be seeing it in Tosca very soon. 
A session is an uninterrupted block of testing and it takes place over a fixed time duration and then that can be reviewed. So each session is associated with a mission that states what to test and what problems or what opportunities should be looked for. That is already predetermined. Um, and this mission objective or those kind of suggested guidelines, that would be known as a charter. And we actually have some great webinars on our website um, done by Ingo about exploratory testing that go into great detail about charters. So if you want to know more about that, just check out um, the recent webinar from Ingo. It's on our website. You can register for that. And you can find out more about how to set up a charter, what a mission would look like if you're going to be the session owner. And, but for now, uh, as we go into this quickly, it's just good to know that the charter or the mission objective, it would, not be it would not contain very detailed guides. It wouldn't be very specific. These are the guidelines you have to follow. But it, it rather has suggestions of what to look out for and so on. We have to keep it you know, exploratory. It can't be too, too specific, what is expected. Um, so many different individuals can participate in the sessions. And there's always going to be one owner per the session. And you can see the list here, some examples of who might be involved, who might be doing the testing. And sessions usually last two hours when the tester spends uninterrupted time focusing on the mission. And between each session, debriefings are held between the session owner and the tester about the session report. So again, more um, guidance is available for arranging like a debriefing um, and how that might be arranged. If you want to check out the other webinars, you can get more into detail about what we recommend um, to debrief what needs to be done, what has been done, etc. So keeping this session-based testing in mind, um, in just a minute we're going to hear from Tony about how to create and work in a session in Tricentis Tosca. And that's going to be from the perspectives of the session owner and from the perspective of a tester. And to begin, he's first going to give us a detailed tour of the exploratory testing section of Tricentis Tosca. And if any of you have taken our online courses um, or even met with a trainer, you're probably familiar with the demo web shop, which we use for many of our trainings. And so you're going to see a little bit of the demo web shop today as he uses it as an example. Um, so yeah, so thanks for listening to the purpose and the theory behind exploratory testing. And now we'll just switch it over to Tony. OK, good morning, everybody. Lovely to have you all here. Just bear with me a second. I'm going to, use, I'm going to be using uh, Tricentis Tosca for the duration of this uh, well, uh, MOOC now. So I just need to quickly set, change some settings in the uh, computer so that you're viewing it and not the PowerPoint. So just bear with me for one second. Okay, so what I'm going to quickly do is change it so you can see my screen entirely. And you will therefore also be able to see Tricensis Tosca and what we have got for you here. So one second. And just change. Okay, so hopefully now you can all see uh, Tricensis Tosca. Um, you'll also just be able to see yourselves on the webinar button there. I can't get rid of that because otherwise I'll cut you all off. So now we're going to talk about what Tricentis Tosca can do for you in your exploratory testing area. We all know Tricentis Tosca is awesome at automation. Um, so what we've now done is we've made Tricentis Tosca awesome at execution, uh, at exploratory testing. And we do this in the green section, in the execution section here. You will know this, hopefully, you will know the sections that we've got, the test cases, et cetera, et cetera. Well, then within execution, you will find the exploratory testing session. Like all sections within Tosca, you can use and set up a folder system to allow you to organize yourself in the way that you see fit, the best way for the testing structure that you guys are taking. So, for example, we've gone for an agile style uh, folder structure for you. It's a very simple, it's just something that came to mind and that I popped in. It's probably not a very accurate reflection. So for example, we've got first release here. We've got sprint one and sprint two. 
within the first sprint, we've got a red team and a gold team, each of their leaders, and within the red team and gold team, we then have the sessions that Melissa was just talking about. So we've then got the um, actual sessions themselves. So each folder contains the sessions. You can have multiple sessions per team, per sprint, however you wish to do it. Um, Session-based testing is what we've gone for within Tricentis Tosca. The reason being, it's the most applicable method to apply exploratory testing in a large-scale implementation. So you can plan the exploratory testing, and this fits within the, the, the idea of what Tricentis Tosca is, is all about. So let's have a look at a session, because this is really where the key is, and let's face it, this is where the magic of Tricentis Tosca begins. So we'll have a look at session number one from Red Team for the moment. So if I click on that, we'll start off with the session view. Okay. So you've got the exploratory testing ribbon at the top here. We'll talk about various parts of it as we go along. But what we're actually going to focus on right now is we are going to focus on the exploratory testing section. Hang on, I'm just going to get the highlighter up. Okay, so we're going to focus on the spotlights here. So, first of all, we've got the session owner. Every session needs an owner. The session owner today is myself. So, uh, Tony, that's me. If I was in a multi-user environment, I would be able to select this little button here, and I would actually be able to choose from all the multi-users to choose the session owner. I enter my email address. Email addresses are important within exploratory testing of interest centers Tosca. We'll get to why in a little while, but it's uh, it's it's very very it's very very powerful, very very useful, and um, we really 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 like it. So we'll get to that in a bit. Session status. So at the moment, my session is in progress. This isn't something I can change as a session owner because it's dictated by what my exploratory testers are up to. So if they haven't started, it would be not in progress. So here I've got session objects. Within the session objects, I can add anything that I, as the session owner, believe is useful for my session. So, for example, we've got two different, well, three, two different types of objects within here. First of all, we've got a couple of test cases. So, for example, I could think, as the session owner, my focus of this session is going to be on looking at the login and logout functions of um, the, web, the demo web shop. So I could include a couple of test cases that have already been automated so that the testers can have a look at them, to have a look at the flow, for example. I've also got a test sheet here. This possibly could show the testers, the exploratory testers, what's already been tested and what's, what's planned for the automation. So they could look and don't have to worry about it. If I want to add something from Tosca, it's extremely easy. So let's add a test case. I'm just going to pop up the test case section. I'm going to go back to the set execution section and just give myself some room. I want to add the navigate to shopping cart test case, for example. I just simply drag it. I've already done it, so let's choose another one. Simply drag it, drop it in, and install it there. Interesting, I'll try a different one. Excuse me. And it's done. Third time lucky. So there you can see if I click on this one, I've got the login. I want to, don't want it anymore. I remove it. Okay, so we don't need test cases anymore, so let's get rid of the test cases. And back to the execution. You can add anything in there. Excel worksheet, PDF, Word document, elements from Tosca, um, pretty much anything you need or what you require, you can add it to the session object section. So very useful. We've then got the session, uh, the session scenario section, which is here. This shows that there's 11 items. This is what, these are the 11 items that have so far been created by my exploratory testers. It's not that I'm setting a target of meeting 11 items. They don't have to do 11 items. This is the items that the exploratory testers have, the scenarios they've already created or in the process of creating. And then we have the session duration. So, so far, they've spent five minutes on testing. If you look down here, you can see John's paid, gone for four minutes, and Paul's done one minute. So, this adds to the duration of total of five minutes. We've then got an overall session um, status. So, we've got 25% of 
uh, past, I've got past test cases, 25% are red, so failed, and the rest have got, as have currently got their result. We've then got the list of our exploratory testers here. So we've got John, Paul, George, and Ringo. If I wish to add one, I simply can click add, and we can add another one there. We don't want to do that just now. So we can just click and add to another, add another one. You'll notice all, they've all got a, um, a simple uh, little envelope. This indicates whether or not the inv um, this indicates whether or not the uh, tester has been invited. Again, we'll get to what that actually means in a little while. You've then got uh, an overall sort of status wheel here. It gives it's two-dimensional. It tells you whether or not the the testing is in progress. So in the case of Paul's, it's in progress. And it also gives you a guide to what's happening within their test uh, scenarios within their uh, within their testing. So you can see some of you can see some of John's. There are some red, which means that there's some. Um, scenarios which are, are failed, and in Paul's, there's not. We've then got the chart description. Now, a charter summarizes the goal and prov or provides an agenda for the exploratory session. It's a clear mission for the session, a statement of how the session will be focused, um, and you should define a charter before you start the session. Now, as you said, Melissa very, very briefly touched on this and also mentioned webinars. But there are really some incredible webinars uh, from Ingo available on our webinar session. If you want to know anything, if you want to know how to set up a charter, how to define it, plus loads and loads of other really, really good information, um, please do check those webinars out. Um, as 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 was said there on the previous webinar section of our Tricenters website. But to get into a little bit of the practicality of the charter here. You can format it very with, with quite a powerful formatting tool. So you can cut, you can paste, you can bold sections, underline, um, italic. You can change the font, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Change the the way that you're formatting it. You can add links, you can add images, you can have tables dropped in here, and you can print it. So you've got a really very powerful way of making your charter look good and really. Um, look good and be attractive and really give people the message that you want to do. Finally, in this view, you've then got the session schedule. So if you do wish to time box your schedule, you're able to do so here. Now, in this case, you'll notice mine isn't, and I can't change it because I chose when I started it not to time box it. For illustrative purposes, I haven't time boxed this one, but if I did, I very well could. Okay, so that's the session owner's view. Let's get down to some more details and see what the actual individual testers themselves can see and do within Tricentis Tosca. So let's have a look at John. So this is John's view. It's very similar in some ways to the view that you've already seen of the session owner, but slight differences. So first of all, you've got the name of the tester, John. There we are, that's his name. And we've got the tester's email address. Tester needs an email to be able to do um, the exploratory testing agent, which we'll be talking about in a minute. Test status in progress, in this case, is, is working in progress, so it's able to be, it's, it's there, he's done, he's in progress, working away. Test objects, this is the same as the test objects for the uh, session administrator, uh, the session owner, but it's different in that it's these objects that the tester might wish to have. So if the tester, for example, wished to have that PDF that we were talking about before himself, which interestingly enough was a PDF on a guide to exploratory testing, which is available to download from our support portal, we think of everything here, um, then he could have that added to himself. Again, you simply drag and drop and it's there and he's got it himself available to look at. So again, elements of Intosca, Excel sheets, however you want to organize it or plan things himself, he can add it to his test objects himself. His test scenarios show the eight test scenarios that he has um, completed so far, or he's working on so far, and the test duration, which he can set himself, of how long has he been doing it for. So actually, it wasn't four minutes, it was four hours, I can't read the time. So let's just change, he's now gone for five hours. So he's now done, he's been working for five hours and 59 minutes. So if we now quickly, just as an illustration, go back to the session, you can see the time has increased on there. 
So there we go. So John's been working a little bit more than he expected, and so therefore to help the time boxing, he's increased it. You can also do by minutes as well here, so you can change the minutes, um, especially if you're looking at a two-hour sprint, for example, a two-hour exploratory testing uh, sprint, I suppose, you could minutes will be much more useful than it would be, than hours would be. So you've got the minutes there as well. I'm going to cancel that. Okay. He himself also has a status bar. In this case, you can see that 75% of uh, John's uh, scenarios are passed, and 25% of them have failed. And you can see this is reflected here. So we've got green ticks on the test, case, on the test scenarios that have passed, and a red cross on the test scenarios that have failed. Very similar, I think, to what you would have seen if you'd been using and doing automation um, and automating test cases. It's a very similar. The iconography is very, very similar to what it's seen before. So it's a very good overview for John to see exactly what he's doing and what he's up to. Um, there's more, though. So we've got his capture scenarios. We've already sort of discussed this. This is the capture scenarios. This is what he's done so far. These are the eight scenarios that John has been looking at in um, over the last five hours and 59 minutes that he's been working on this uh, session. Just going to expand one of them. This is the login scenario. And you can see these are the things that he's done. These are the actions that he's taken. These are the steps that he's taken. You can see that we've got here images of what he's done. We'll go into this in more detail in a second, but there's the images of what he's done so far um, and whether it's passed and failed and further information. We'll look at all of this and how it's generated in a second, but already you can see here this is a very, very powerful way and a very um, broad way of looking at a lot of information that's very, very easily displayed for you and easily displayed for as well for the session owner. So all of this information is there, available and viewable for you very easily. We've also got what's here is the test summary tab. The test summary tab is again for the exploratory tester to put his thoughts, his feelings, his ideas about what he's testing. At some point there's going to be the debriefing that Melissa's already mentioned. So for this debriefing he needs information. He needs to think what's important, what's good, what's bad, what does he need to work upon. This is where he can add it to the test summary so he's got it listed. Again, we've got exactly the same uh, formatting and ability to change and to, to make it look as attractive as he wishes to do. He can add things, um, you can add objects, etc., etc., exactly linked, exactly as we said before. In the additional instructions tab, it's does the session owner have any specific instructions for John? Now, again, I'm going to point you towards one of Ingo's um, wonderful webinars. The webinar that he did last week um, in in contained a huge wealth of information on what sort of these sorts of things could be. We talked about there was the, he talked about um, tours, the tour method of using of, of exploratory testing, but he also talked about um, this sounds a bit weird, but Edward Bono's six thinking hats, which is extremely powerful. It's extremely powerful ideas that can be added into testing. Um, so really, seriously, I urge you to check these webinars out. Um, extremely large amount of information delivered extremely entertainingly as well. So, Lingo is now laughing. Uh, I'll take the bribe from him a bit later. Thank <laughs> you. Um, so, that's what the scenario uh, looks like for John. So, let's now look at the actual, stop looking at the view and start looking at the actual mechanics of how we do exploratory testing within Tricenters Tosca. The biggest problem in exploratory testing is how to document everything that you're doing. If you think that every step you take, you need to potentially document to see where you've gone and how you've got to, it, depending on how you're doing it, writing it down or Excel or whatever, it could take longer to document the steps that you're taking than it actually can to click the button on or do the action or take the action that you've got in the system that you're testing, the system of the test. So what we've done at Transcendentist Tosca is we've tried to offer solutions to make this easier for you and to make sure that you've got a, a way of making it standardized across all of your exploratory testers, have a way of recording it and displaying it in the same way to make it as useful as possible for the session owner and for those that are actually looking at the, um, the product owners. So let's create some scenarios. 
So John is going to continue his work and he's going to start a new scenario. To do so, we would click on the Start New button right here. This will launch the exploratory, the scenario manager. Interesting. I'm just going to quickly switch off Alex with PowerPoint. Uh-huh, and there we go. Hang on one second, we appear to be having a... Just bear with us, we're having a slight technical issue here. There we go. Okay, so here we have the Scenario Manager. Now within the Scenario Manager, we are going to capture our uh, exploratory scenarios that John is working on. So, how do we do that? We have three methods of creating and, dupl and looking at our scenarios. So let's start with the most basic one. So first of all, we're going to create a scenario. We're going to call it Shopping Basket for the case of something to do, just an illustration. And we're just going to manually create a step. So step one would be Open Internet Explorer. Step two, click the shortcut, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm sure you can you can see what we see where we're going here. We can click that it's all passed. We can add a screenshot if we wish. So we can add a design screenshot. Um, we can add attachments. You know, we could open it, delete. We've got quite a lot of of ways of of controlling and looking what we're doing here. If we wanted to set it as failed, we can set it as failed as well by clicking on set failed etc etc set past so it's all it's very easy it's very manual so it is a good way of of organizing and duplicating and showing what we've got but it's not the quickest way it's it's quicker than say writing in excel but it's not the best not the best way really it's quite a lot of work so let's save and close i'm going to pop tosca back up here uh, so what are we going to do now we are going to look at another way of doing it the second and the um, and a better way of looking at it. What we're going to do is we're going to take a video. So I want to do a scenario. We're going to uh, shopping basket again. We're going to navigate to the shopping basket by um, and way that we do that is we're going to do it by video. So I just click on the video icon, which is right up here, and as you can see, it's loading. I want to click my secondary screen, and I'm going to record. And you'll see here that already we've got here three little icons. I hope you can see this. Uh, three little icons, stop, pause, and that uh, we've recorded nine minutes of video. So I'm going to quickly launch Internet Explorer. And there we go. Internet Explorer is working, opening. I'm going to launch the demo web shop. I am going to navigate to the shopping cart. There's my shopping cart. Let's have a look. I'm going to remove this item and update the shopping cart. And that's it. I'm now going to close Internet Explorer. That's my test. That's my scenario done. I'm now going to stop. And there we are. Now, what's launched is the video editor. This is what you've just seen me recording. And you can see that there I am showing you everything here and that the video is now playing. Okay, that's, that's cool. We've now got a really nice video here. But it doesn't stop there. The magic will continue. So let's just pause it a second. Let's say, for example, I've spotted in my exploratory, my exploratory um, test, I've spotted there's an error here. So let's show that apparel and shoes has a problem. I'm going to add a box. I'm going to add narrow to that box. And I'm going to add a text box saying apparel is the wrong color, for example. Okay. Okay, we carry on. We press play. We keep going. Oh, let's say there's another problem here. The computing and internet is, well, it's got an issue with it, so I highlight computing and internet. I add an arrow example so that, and so on and so forth. I think you get the, the picture. And that's done, so press, we go, we press play. Now, one of the key things for us, if we were looking at this as a failed test case, is where are the problems? So you'll also notice on the timeline, we've got two little red dots. We've also got two tabs here. I can click those tabs, and it will take me directly 
for our two the areas where there is an issue. So I can scroll between the two and where I've annotated and where I've made notes on the video. That's really good. It means that whoever's reviewing the video can actually go straight to the important thing to look at what the problem is. Okay, we've also got a large quantity. If you remember the first, the first chunk of the screen was actually me showing you the screen. So what we can also do is we can whiz up because we don't want to waste time looking at the wrong thing and we can trim that out. So I've now trimmed that video. So it's now much shorter than it was before. It means whoever's looking at it doesn't have to waste time. You don't have to save, if you necessary, a very large video with a larger, um, with a larger uh, file size or length. You can simply have what you need and the length that you need. Really cool. Really good. Save and close. Um, and it's there. We click it on past. Thank you very much. Save and close. We've done. John's shopping basket is there with a video. You can click on the video, click on the MP4, it's done. Okay, very nice. That's a very, very useful, very powerful tool to record your scenarios. Okay, let's do the last one. The last one is by far the best. So let's start on new again, and this time what we're going to do hang on a second, is we're going to look at interactions. So in this case, we're going to look at the login. I'll spell it correctly. Login. Okay, so we're going to choose interactions. So I click interactions, the same loading comes up, and I've got in the corner of the screen, which you can't see, unfortunately, I'll see if I can drag it over, I can. Uh, you see, you can even drag and drop it over into the right screen when you've got two screens. I've got stop, pause, and it's recording again. But this time it's not recording um, the screen as such. It's not recording a video. It's recording a, uh, the interactions that I make with the website and the interactions I make with my, not with my website, sorry, with my computer and with my system. So I'm going to open Internet Explorer. Up it pops. I am going to choose the demo web shop. I am going to click on the login and I'm going to put a false email address in and I am going to put in a password. This is wrong. It should fail. It's failed. Excellent. That's what I was wanted to see. I'm now going to stop. Within the scenario manager, we have now got a list of everything that I've just done, all the interactions that I've just taken. In the top, in the test step, we've got what I was interacting with. So in this case, I was interacting with my taskbar. In the test step value, I've got the interaction of what I did. So it's actually telling me what I did. So within the taskbar, I clicked on Internet Explorer. Within Webtron, which is the name of the uh, web page that I was on, I'm clicking on the demo web shop button, et cetera, et cetera. Let's go down a little bit, a little bit further. I typed test in the email box here. I realized I'd spelled it wrong, so I pressed back, and I changed it, and so on and so forth. So it's showing me everything that I did. We then got a screenshot of everything that I did, which is shown here, which I can then look at. It's a view that shows everything that I've done, every step that I've taken. Um, it's good. It shows logically everything that I've done. I've clicked through it. It's showing every step that I take, but it, we can do better with that. So let's have a look at the design view of this scenario. So I click on design, and what I get instead is I get a, um, a way of, of looking at it in a better expanded view that makes it much easier for me to look at what's been done and how it's been done and so on and so forth. So if you look, you've got, a, you've got my uh, um, desktop. So let's have a look at something more interesting. Let's have a look at the demo web shop. And look here, I've got that I clicked in the email box. It showed that I've gone into the email. I go to the next one. And it showed that I've showed test, T-E-S-R-T. -T. It's taken a screenshot of that. Here it's showing what I've typed in here. Here I've got that I've done a press back. Okay, that's really the same one. Let's merge them. So I drop them here. I've merged these two. It's now the same test there. Test, I don't need to know that I press back. That's not important. My 
lack of typing skills isn't part of the test. So and so on and so forth. So I've not got demo web shop. Uh, login. I've clicked on the login button. Um, login on the Internet Explorer. It's got that I've entered the password. It shows me what the password is. Really, really useful. So I'm going to keep all. Go back to the scenario, and I'm going to save and close, and let's see what that looks like. So there's the login. I didn't set a uh, whether I passed or failed on that, because I didn't finish it, so you can see this doesn't have the passed and failed view. So all very, that, as you can possibly see, is very powerful, and if I go back, when I go to the login, I can expand it, and I can double-click on these, and there it is. I've got the screenshot with the highlighted, with the password, etc. entered in. By the way, if I went back into here and I wanted to start again, because there's something actually I haven't shown you. Let's show you something else. I can just select the continue selected the continue selected button. I can't speak now. I select that. And I can carry on with my scenario. Okay, so I can continue with my scenario, bear with me. It seems that we sometimes have problems with uh, recording the... There we go. And there we go again. So there it is. It's, we have some problems with the webinar and the capturing of the screens. It sometimes causes a little bit of a uh, conflict between uh, our, well, my computer and other things. So it's this, this doesn't operate in real life like this, I can guarantee you. So I want to continue then I can continue as I go along. Also what I wanted to show you was I can, if I wanted to look at the screenshot again, I can double click it, I can open it, and I can also edit it again. So if I don't think that box is big enough, the click box here, I can open it and I can highlight it, I can make it bigger. I can, if it's click, is clicks big for me, so I want, I could make it bigger, I can change the size of the font, um, etc, etc. So I can still edit everything that I've done we don't have to just go what we've gone with. So we'll save and close, we'll save and close. Okay, that you can obviously see is a really, really powerful way of recording our, um, our, um, your scenarios. Um, some of you out there might be saying, well, that's a great exploratory testing scenario. Could I make that into a manual test case? You know what? You can. And let's do it. So we select on failed login, for example. I hope I haven't done this one like last time. I right click, I click create manual test case. And by the power of Tricentis Tosca, so it is. We have created a manual test case. Just like that. Very, very easy. Now we don't just stop there though. Um, if what if you wanted, say for example, this was an extremely important uh, test case for you. What if you wanted to turn that into a automated test case. Well, we can do that for you as well. That's a video. All you would need to do, and I'm not going to show you exactly how we do this because it would take uh, because it's a whole different course. What you could do, I'm just going to create another manual test case here, is simply add a module. If you knew which module you want, so for the login module, you could add the module login to it, and that would create an automated test case, an automated test step. So you can do that. This is a whole other course, though, to be honest with you, but it could, from, a, from creating an exploratory scenario all the way through to creating a manual test to creating an automated test step, it is a few clicks away. Okay, but let's also look at the, another really cool feature. Um, Let's look at the exploratory testing agent. So they're going to go back to execution. I'm going to close my test cases. We don't need those anymore. John, Paul, George, and Ringo. We know that they've all been. In, we know that they're all there. You'll notice that some of them are invited and some of them not. I'm going to go to session two now and look at Jerry, Mal, and the girls. You'll notice that two of them are off. They're up and running and they're testing. But Mel B, Victoria, and Emma are not. Let's change that. I want Mel B to join in the fun, and she is going to start testing. 
So what I need to, what I all need to do is first of all make sure she's got her email address in. What I'm, she has. What I'm quick. She's there. She's Mel B. A session owner. I select Mel B and I invite her. My email client is opening right now. It's not open, but it is now opening. And what I have now is I have an invitation for Mel B to join the test, which I will send from my email client. Now I'm going to pretend to be a Mel B for a while. A little bit of a dream for me, really. And I am going to open the link that I've been sent. And you'll notice that I've got a link to the exploratory testing agent. What I'm going to do is I'm going to install that. And I'm going to show you how quickly this will install for you. It's all held on the server that you would set up when you set up Tricentis um, Tri Tosca originally. So it's all held on your servers. We you could climb up, you click start download, we click run. It's now uh, it's installing, but you can't see it because it's installing on another screen. There you are, it's loading, installing, downloading, and it's loading. We're doing this live. And there we have it. Already done. Three clicks, was that? Three clicks. Up oh, has opened the session mouth, uh, the session manager. So let's we can view the charter if we have if we had it loaded. It's just here. We can start exploring. So now Mel B, as I am pretending to be Mel B, uh, can start exploring. And she can click on the demo web shop. She can click log in. She can try and log in. A password, invalid email address, excellent. Password, login, okay, great, unsuccessful. So we can now stop. We go back to the scenario manager, and wow, have you seen this before? You have, because it is the full scenario manager that you had available to you with the full installation of Tricentis Tosca. And the important thing here is Mel B does not need Tricentis Tosca in, uh, loaded up onto her machine. She just needs this. So if you look, cast your mind back to when Melissa was talking about who could possibly uh, be exploratory tested. There were some names there that aren't testers, business owners. UAT testers, it would be the users. They don't need a full installation of Tricentis Tosca. It wouldn't make sense. So you can send them this, and they have this little, little app uh, accessible to them, which they can then do all their testing with. Save and close. OK, uh, cancel. Sorry, I haven't kept them. Um, there we go. Save and close. We've got a scenario there. OK, great. Mel B's done. She's done her work. So she stops exploring, and she completes. If she clicks complete session, this is going to be uploaded to the server. There it was. It was so quick you didn't see it. She hasn't done a lot of work. Mel. So we exit, and she's done. This generates an email that would say that Mel B has completed, that she would send, that would go to me as the session owner. I don't want that, though, because I know that I did it. I'm given that I am Mel. And we go back to Tosca. And we will see that Mel B has stopped. It's now in progress. And we will be able to import her results. So you can see there's results available. And I can import the results. There we go. That is what I've just done. Downloaded, available to view. Nice and simple. One last thing to show you. As I'm, we're beginning to run out of time, we know you've got loads of cool questions. They're still coming in. You can go typing away furiously in the background there. So let's look at how we can actually document and have a look at how we can look and see the documentation that we can do with this. So we can export the document um, and so that we can use it. So we click on the Scenario Documentation tab. We get some options, and we click Export. I'm going to do it to my desktop, and it's generating a PDF. You can also do a preview as well for it. So I look at the scenario document that I've just launched, and we've got a scenario documentation. Within this, it gives a summary of what's being done. It's all hyperlinked up. Great. It's a summary of everything that's happened. We've got scenario description, so we'll the overview of what we've done. Plus, it's got the media. So I can click here. It'll take me to that screenshot. 
I want to look at the control alt q the one that failed because I think if I'd have set results this would be the result that failed I can click on this and it shows me the screenshots I can go back takes me back to where I've been before other two little bits of information that's very very useful very very helpful system information this tells you everything you need to know about the computer and the system that was being used during the test so if the developer can't figure out why there's that issue maybe it's a, something to do with the computer you can have a look at the settings of the computer also you can look at the applications that have been used this shows me that it was an Internet Explorer and it tells me the version and the build and all the information that you needed about the Internet Explorer. So if it was a conflict with Internet Explorer, it's there for you to view. So that's the, some, that's the session and the scenario documentation. Right. I think I've covered everything. Well, Back to Melissa. if anyone does have questions, just feel free at this time to wrap them up and enter them into the question box. As a short recap of some of the things that we went over today, if you're trying to come up with your questions, we did cover what exploratory testing is, an introduction to the purpose and theory behind it, how to create your sessions in Tricentis Tosca, how to capture interactions during your scenarios, and how to work in the exploratory testing agent. So now we're just going to move into our Q&A session. Thank you very much for posting your questions. Thank you for your participation. Um, feel free to add a couple more at this time. We'll try to get to everything we can in the next few minutes. And I'll pass it over to Ingo, who has been keeping track of what we'll be covering now. Okay, thanks so much, Melissa. So there are a lot of questions coming in, so thanks for that, guys. And thanks for the feedback. I really appreciate that. Um, but just a few questions uh, I would like to dive into. The first one is... Um, can we assume exploratory testing is also called as ad hoc or usability testing? So um, there are just two answers for that. I think that's a general question, so therefore I'll raise it uh, and explain it to all of you. So ad hoc testing, that's a, a very specific discipline of testing. It's basically testing completely unspecified. And uh, in the same way, exploratory testing can be performed. So exploratory testing can be expressed in very different uh, ways it can uh, come to us in so many different flavors. So that means it ranges from uh, completely unstructured approaches, which are, for example, called uh, freestyle exploratory testing, to structured ones, which are called uh, session-based testing. That is exactly what you have seen today, or thread-based testing. It's a generalized form of session-based testing. Um, and the second part of the question was, is it some kind of of a usability testing uh, method? Uh, I would say no. Um, usability is a certain aspect about your application. So you could, I, you could also focus on performance, on scalability, on testability, on understandability, the coherence, the functionality of your system. So it really depends on um, what you want to focus on your session and that's usually being written in the charter, should be part of the charter because as mentioned the charter just uh, houses your goals and the scope of uh, your session. So that's question number one. Um, there are a lot of questions since when Tosca is available, uh, since when exploratory testing is available in Tosca. So it's uh, the first version is available since uh, version 9.0. In this version we just have had the video recording feature. In the upcoming versions, then, we uh, incrementally added the record or capture interaction task you have seen today. And uh, now with the uh, latest version, 10.0, we have uh, implemented the standalone exploratory testing assistant, which we call the exploratory testing agent, the thing you have seen before. And there's a question associated to it. Uh, do I need to have Tosca installed on the machine in order to use the agent? No. Uh, you don't need to have Tosca installed. You just uh, download it. There is also no server configuration needed on the machine for the invited pers person. You just download it, use it, and share the results. And that, that's the way it works. Um, there's one more question. The exploratory testing in Tosca is similar to parallel execution. They just share more or less the same icon, so don't get confused. Uh, the 
component you were talking about most probably is distributed execution. And uh, here we also just use some kind of a calendar icon to highlight uh, the test event. And uh, because of the fact that a session can also be regarded as some kind of a test event, we use similar icons. So don't can get confused about that. Another question is, do I need to scan the application first in order to record uh, the interactions? No, there is no scan required up front. It really just scans during your expiration. And uh, in the background, we also don't create modules. So we don't automatically convert your scenarios into automated test cases. And there's a reason for that, guys, because first of all, it would take much more time to do that. Second, 90% of the stuff you're doing won't be of interest after you have ended your session. So we don't want to create so many uh, crap, actually. <laughs> you just want to just will throw away then at the end of your session. And as you have seen, you are able to convert uh, your exploratory scenarios into manual test cases, and those can then be automated in, uh, in simple terms. These basically all the general questions. So I'm handing now back to Melissa. Okay, if you have anything else, we'll just wait a couple minutes if, if there's something important that pops up that we're able to cover. But just to wrap up, I want to switch to the next slide and let you know what is coming up in the Academy MOOCs. Like I said, you can expect to see MOOCs coming from the Tricentis Academy every couple weeks. And coming up on February 8th, we have the topic loops and conditions, when and how to use them. And then again, on February 22nd, we have our third MOOC, Getting to Know the Tricentis Tosca Standard Modules. So both of these topics are useful for everyone who works in Tosca. And when you are leaving our MOOC today, please complete the feedback. We've prepared an exit survey for you. We'd love um, to get your feedback and hear your suggestions on how to make these MOOCs very valuable to you. Um, we're doing this for you, our audience. Um, just to make sure that you can add all of these skills to your everyday use in Tosca and hope to be covering all the hands-on topics that are important to you. And then for the next slide, here at Tricentis, we're always happy to help, so please contact us if you have any further questions, if you need Tosca support. Um, we have support at tricentis.com if you have any Tosca issues. And then also if you have um, a need to contact training or the academy, just write over to academy at tricentis.com and you can ask questions about upcoming MOOCs, add your suggestions there if you need to, um, or anything related to the academy and the courses that we offer. So thank you to Tony, thank you to Ingo for sharing your expertise. And if no more questions have popped up, then I guess we're going to wrap up today. And we're, we did record the session and this will be made available for download in a couple days, you can look for it on the Academy website. Also check out the webinars on um, tricentis.com. You can look for the events and recorded webinars. And you can also register for free for upcoming webinars as well. And we'll see you in a couple weeks. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining.